Hey, this is Will N5 OLA. It's my current HW101 on the bench for repair. Um, those on the shelf are waiting to be repaired. You know, you open one of these things up and sometimes they're easy and sometimes mm -mm, not easy. This one, not easy. The receiver, let me show you something. All right, I'm going to put a piece of tape over this guy's call sign because we're not here to shame anybody. Um, this receiver works, but check it out. you got to crank that thing all the way up. Why is that? Well, I'm going to show you just a very basic signal tracing technique. This was helpful for me when I learned how to do these rigs. Hopefully, this will be helpful for you. The receiver circuit runs roughly, this is an oversimplification, but from V10, V11, V12, V3, and V4. Uh, there's more to it than that, but those are the first tubes in the circuit, and that's what we're going to look at. I love my HP signal generator. If you don't have a fancy one like this, you just have an analog that will work too. I'm going to put a 0.01 capacitor on the business end of this probe so that no voltage backs into my signal generator. Wouldn't want that. So I'm going to set this at 80 meters, put the dial at 250, set my signal generator for 3.750, and if you have an analog, just sweep it until you hear a signal in the next step. Okay, I've got that at pin one of V10. We're at the beginning of the receiver circuit. And I'm gonna tune around until I get a reading. And I'm gonna just adjust the pre-selector so that my reading is right at S9, okay? Just wanna use that as a marker. So now I'm going to go from the grid, pin one of V10 to the grid, pin one of V11. All right, get it in there. And, oh, I've got roughly the same S units, okay? I haven't done any adjustments. I wanna make sure that I'm getting basically the same signal strength from one grid to the next, and I am, good. Okay, for tube V12, our third tube that we're gonna check, I'm changing my frequency output to 8.645. That's because at this point in the receiver circuit, we're mixing in the bandpass filter. So it's we want to check to see what kind of signal we're getting at 8.645 megahertz. So we're still on the grids. I'm going to go to pin 2 of V12, and that is right there. Okay, so... Signal's a little stronger, still in the ballpark. Um, we know the chain hasn't been broken yet, so let's move on to the IF board to V3. All right, now I'm going to change my frequency to 3.395 because that brings in the frequency of the crystal filter. Wait, did I just screw that up? Yes, I did. Here we go. So now we're on the grid of tube V3, which is pin one. Nice and strong. All is well. Let's go to V4. I think for this one, I'm going to turn the rig on its side. Okay. This is pin one. I'm touching it and I don't hear anything. Barely. Do you hear that? Hmm. Let's look at the S mirror. There is nothing happening at V4. That is why we do signal tracing. So now I'm going to run some voltage checks at V4. This is the receiver voltage chart from the manual. And I see that at pin one, I should have 1.5 volts. 
I've got negative 0.4 volts. That's not cool. This is from the circuit description section of the manual at the back. Probably the most valuable part of the entire manual because it explains how the signal works its way through the circuit. And as you can see, that signal is coming from grid to plate. And then it's going through T102 to get to that grid. That makes me think something's going on in here. This transformer's not happy. This is the x-ray view of T102. And the first thing I always do is just a very superficial visual inspection of that neighborhood. And looky there. That is pin three of transformer T102. The builder never soldered pin three. I don't think this rig has ever had a properly working receiver. Watch what happens when I force a contact to the board. Voila, it works. So we can see that's pin three, and that's where the transformer is getting its B plus voltage. It's getting 300 volts right through there. And so not getting to the tube, the receiver's cut. That's our problem. Signal tracing wins out. And it works. And it gets loud. Love it. I don't know what happened back in 1978. Maybe he was trying to get this thing put together a little too fast. He was getting tired. Maybe he was on his third beer. I don't know, but mistakes happen. Um, God knows I've made a few. So anyway, it's working. There's some basic signal tracing for you. Hope it helps and uh, good luck with your repair or restoration 73.